Hello folks, this is Sula once again. Welcome to another video for League of Legends. In this video, we're going to be looking at the champion Varus, as played by Saint Showdown. This is taken from one of our Tuesday YouTube Night custom games. In this game, he is going to be playing alongside... Uh, who else do we have here? We've got me. I am usually in these games. I'm going to be playing as Nasus in this game. We also have Faflik playing as Lux, Bimbo's playing as Kha'Zix, and Jungling as Kha'Zix. And the other support in this game is Mark Owens, who's going to be playing as Pike. Then on the other side, on the red team side, we're going to have Myth playing as Silas, Drill Warrior supporting as Yumi, alongside Resniak, who's going to be playing as uh, Kaisa. XPL is going to be jungling as Graves, and then Impolite is going to be playing in mid lane as Vagar. Let me go ahead and set up the uh, scoreboard here. This is a custom game, so it doesn't set up on its own. Do, 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 do. Oh boy. There we go, that should get everybody. Oh, this is also a new feature in this patch, by the way. New feature in the Observer Client, or the Replay Client Objective Timers. This is really cool. I like seeing this a lot. I'm gonna make sure to turn this on in future videos. You can see all the major timers over there on the right-hand side of the screen. Okay, so a little bit about Varus. First of all, a note about the champion name. I understand that this champion is usually called Varus. The reason why I use Varus is because for many, many years, I played alongside Varus Nox, and it got extremely confusing to have Varus Nox as one of the players who is frequently in my videos and have a champion also named Varus, so I just use Varus for simplicity's sake. I understand it's not the standard pronunciation, but just bear with me there. We're going to be seeing Saint Showdown play as Varus, and he's going to be laning together with Mark, who's going to be playing as Pike. Mark was the Galio player in the last video that I put up on this channel, likes to play support, is really effective as Pike. And uh, he's been good enough that we've actually banned the Pike in a lot of our custom games, just when he's on the other team, because people do not want to see his Pike come out. So, a few quick notes about Varus as a champion. He's a champion who is more early game focused, more lane focused. He's a bit of a bully as far as his laning goes. He is someone who uh, puts a lot of pressure on the enemy team. Very good at, oh, well, let's get back to that in a second. Right here, you see Mark going in, lands the Bone Skewer. He is going to be traded back, though, pretty efficiently by Resiak and Drill Warrior. And overall, I think that trade was slightly better for Red Team than for Blue Team, but a close fight overall. Okay, anyways, I was saying Varus is a bit of a lane bully, has very good poke. He is not as good at sustained damage in a fight, like he will be outscaled in the late game if you have an auto attack based champion, like a Tristana, for example, or a Kaisa, will eventually outscale him, but really good at applying poke damage and good at putting pressure on the enemy team in lane. All right, so right there we're gonna see Mark go in. He actually misses the Bone Screw that time, but Resiak is taking a ton of damage. He's going to have to flash here. Drill Warrior is gonna hop over to him, use the heal on the Yumi E. I, the, what is it called, Zoomies? Yes, going to use the Zoomies and going to force the retreat back. So this is significant. Look what happened there. Resiak had to flash. Drill Warrior had to use both summoners. Resiak's gonna teleport back to the lane. So he's not gonna lose any farm here per se. But he did have to use all of his summoners, and that's pretty significant. All four summoners down for red team here in the bot lane. Blue team has only used the ignite on marks. So they've got a pretty big edge in having both of their flashes and their heal up, whereas red team is down all summoners. No escapes and no combat summoners like heal and ignite either. All right, so with that early trading out of the way, let's look briefly at some of the abilities on Varus because Saint is going to be walking back to lane here. I'll start with the passive living vengeance. When Varus kills an enemy, Come on, screen. When Varus kills an enemy, he enters a Vengeful Fury, gains increased attack speed for 5 seconds. Champion kill, you get 40% attack speed. Non-champion kill, i.e. minion kill or neutral monster kill, 20% additional attack speed. Makes a big difference in teamfights, so it's kind of like a mini reset function in the sense that like, he doesn't get Tristana's rocket jump on cooldown. Uh, he doesn't get Jinx's get excited on, on a kill. But if he gets a kill in a teamfight, he does get a quick burst of attack speed. And he also can get that by killing a minion as well. Still, it's not an especially awesome passive, but it is something to keep an eye on. He does get extra attack speed, so like, watch, he'll kill a minion here, and then gets the attack speed boost for, there it is, popping up on the interface for five seconds. Five seconds fairly long, there it is. So you can see it time out there. So yep, there it is again. It's relatively easy to keep this up most of the time in lane and get that 20% additional speed. All right, so we're gonna see Mark win. He's gonna land the Bone Skewer this time, and then force Resiak to push away and gonna drive him off that minion lane. Looks like it's not gonna turn to another fight just yet. And we will wait to see if Mark's gonna go back in when his cooldowns are back up. 
So I mentioned that over, oh, going into the, the undertow there. Gonna go invisible, he's gonna look to go in. And let's see, he's gonna land the Bone Skewer that time on Resiak. Oh, Drawer can't hop back in because he's already hopped in once before. So that's gonna lead to kill, and uh-oh, this is the sad part of playing Yumi. Nobody to jump to, oh, slow motion car crash. And Saint is going to end up getting that kill as well. So they got the initial kill with some nifty play from Mark going in, landing the Bone Skewer right as Drill Warrior hopped out as Yumi. And there is a cooldown on that you and me, what is it, you and me, the W. Uh, so couldn't hop back in immediately thereafter. We're able to get the kill on Resiax Kaisa. And then once that happens, Yumi is dead to rights, no flash, no escape skills, nothing that can be done. And Saint literally just auto attacks down and gets that kill. They're going to pick up the two tower plates right here. They're going to get off a free back timing as the tower eats all of these minions, and it looks like they're going to get a pretty much a perfect reset in lane. So they are going to be very, very far ahead as a result of that double kill and two tower plates. Uh, almost a thousand gold ahead in lane right now, and 600 gold ahead on the support. So that just went really, really well for them. All right, while they're walking back to lane, let's look at some of the other abilities. I'll start with the Q on Varus. This is his big harass skill in lane. Piercing arrow, Varus starts drawing back his next shot, gradually increasing its range and damage. While preparing to shoot, Varus's movement speed is slowed by 20%. Uh, you can only draw back the bow for four seconds. After that, it's canceled, but it refunds half the mana cost. When you use it again, Varus fires his arrow, deals physical damage, reduced by per enemy hit. So uh, if it hits like a minion and then goes on to hit a champion beyond that, does deal reduced damage. Cooldown is reduced by four seconds if the arrow detonates blight stacks, which we'll get to in a second. That's applied by his, uh, his W. Anyway, right here, we see a teleport in from back, like behind, so we'll get back to that in a second. Uh, we're going to have Mark dash behind the enemy team. Restiax trying to get out of there, but nope, not going to be able to, even with the zoomies, even with the speed up from the heal on the part of Drill Warrior. Just not able to escape, and so Fafflex teleporting in onto this ward behind the red team is going to put them further behind in lane. And now a nice initiation right there from Mark goes through the wall, and then that's going to be enough to pick off the kill. We've got the extra Lux laser coming in from Fafflex, not needed in that case. Really nifty play. I love that uh, yeah, entry approach on the pike to go through the terrain and then immediately Bone Skewer. Just grab Drill Warrior. I don't think he was expecting that, so it leads to another double kill in bottom lane. One kill for each of the champions, but an overall double kill. And they are, again, just often rolling in this bot lane really far ahead. Now even further ahead than they were before. Mirsiak's going to do his best to farm down here, but uh, he is out-leveled. Uh, it's actually level 6 to level 4 right here. Mirsiak's really, really low. Low enough that, like, one auto might finish him off. Oh, the Chain of Corruption hits! And then an auto allows Saint to finish it off, and this is just... Ooh. Snowball and out of control down here. I can't even describe the Varus abilities because they've been picking up that many kills. Now you might say, well, why isn't the game snowballing further in Blue Team's Edge? It's only about a thousand gold lead. Well, that's because I am getting dumpstered pretty badly in this top lane by Myth. He is 900 gold ahead, or almost 900 gold ahead up in this top lane. And in fact, the jungle matchup is pretty heavily in their favor as well. XBL is almost, he's like 600 gold ahead in the jungle matchup. Uh, largely because he's just had more farm. 52 to 28 is a huge disparity in jungler farm. So that's why the game is as close as it is, is, is not further away, despite the fact that bot lane is really far ahead on the part of blue team. All right, checking back in with the Saint. So I mentioned Q is kind of his big harass skill. Note that it does have a long cooldown. It starts at 18 seconds. There is some cooldown reduction right now on the part of Saint. He has picked up the Ghost Blade, gets the 10% cooldown reduction, but it is a lengthy skill, so you, you won't be spamming this in lane. It's more something you use, like there it is right there. Uh, pull back the bow, try to uh, get the extra channel duration for more range and more damage. And as I said, it's kind of his main harassment tool in lane. Let's look at this, how this synergizes with the other skills on the part of Varus. So I'll highlight the W next. This has both a passive and an active function. Most of the time, only the passive function is in effect because note that the skill has a ridiculously long 36 second cooldown. There's ultimates that are much lower cooldown than that. So passive, Varus's basic attacks deal bonus magic damage and apply stacks of blight for six seconds. Stacks up to three times. Varus's other abilities detonate blight. So you can detonate the blight with this Q or with his E. I suppose you can also do it with the ult, but normally you detonate it with the Q or the E. 
So his other abilities detonate those blade stacks. They deal magic damage equal to 3% of the target's maximum health per stack. So if you have max stacks on it, deals, what, 9% of target's max health. There, note, that's not current health, that is max health, so it is useful against tankier champions. Then there is an active function, next piercing arrow, that's the Q. Next piercing arrow deals bonus magic damage equal to 10 to 15% of the target's missing health, scales with piercing arrow charts. So if you charge it up for longer, you get more of the extra damage there. Also, Mark almost hits another bone skewer there, but fortunately for Resiak, he is able to step out of the way of that. All right, so the way this functions, his, uh, what is it, his basic attacks apply blight stacks, and then you can detonate the blight stacks with either the E or the Q. Uh, both of these are, you know, I've seen both of these used pretty frequently. If you're at closer range, it's easier to hit the E. If you're at long range, it's easier to hit the Q, but you apply those blight stacks, and then you trigger them with either a Q or a W. Anyway, let's check in on the mid lane here, because it looks like they might be having a fight. Nope. Mark is roamed up there, but has not been able to translate that into a kill. Uh, that is another function, nice function of being ahead in lane. Oh, right there you see the damage from that long range Q. Because Saint has gotten ahead in this lane, he's able to just poke away with that Q. And when it's charged up, it has great range, and it does that bonus damage. Lands the Chain of Corruption right there. That's going to go into Mark, and, and jumping into this fight as well. He's going to use the Pike Ultimate, picks up one kill there on Resiak, gets really low. Low enough that they can't dive Drill Warrior under the tower, but does not pick that up. And here comes XPL. He's going to look to opt in right now. So Mark's going to dash away. He has run into the brush where there's no vision. He's going to ult and then flash, and that is going to be enough to disengage right there. They're at, oh, wow. And again, the damage coming in. Saint's going to flash, and then XPL's going to flash to, in order to disengage. Resiak teleports back to the tower. So overall, just turns into a 1 for 0. Does not turn into more kills, but a lot of flashes blown there. Both flashes on the part of blue team blown, and then the flash on the part of XPL blown as well, when he was chasing on the tail end of that. So 1 for 0 on the part of blue team, but they did have to use all their summoners. They used the ignite, they used the heal, they used both flashes, so they are going to be more vulnerable in terms of future fights down there in the bot lane. Still, they are 6-0 and oh in the bot lane right now, and just extremely far ahead. About 2,000 gold ahead in the AD matchup, and then another 1,200 gold ahead in the support matchup. Been action-packed enough that I've been having trouble getting through all of the skills on the part of Varus, so let's highlight the E now. Hail of Arrows. Varus fires a Hail of Arrows that deals physical damage and desecrates the ground for 4 seconds. Slows enemy movement speed by 30%. Reduces healing effects by 40%. So this is a healing debuff when you hit on the Hail of Arrows. And as we mentioned, it both deals uh, deals that initial damage and then it desecrates the ground. If you walk through the desecrated ground, it's a movement speed slow and reduces the healing uh, as well. So again, useful skill, useful for harass. It is easier to hit this than the Q, but it has much shorter range than the Q. And again, either one of them can trigger the blight stacks. So you get the basic idea of how this works. You want to ideally hit an auto attack or two to apply the blight stacks, then trigger it either with your Q or your E. And then, of course, your ult also gives you a form of hard crowd control, which is rare on AD carries. Most ADs do not have much in the way of hard CC. I guess I should highlight that since I am talking about it. Chain of Corruption clings out a Tendril Corruption, deals magic damage, immobilizes the first enemy champion hit for two seconds. Uh, it's a root, which means they can't move. They can still auto-attack, they can still use skills, but they can't move. Corruption then spreads towards nearby uninfected enemy champs. If it reaches them, they take the same damage and are also immobilized. They also gain blight stacks over the duration. Anyway, it looks like we have a fight here in the jungle. We have Bimbos invading along with the, along with uh, Fatlight from the mid lane. Now we're going to see the defensive uni ult coming out on the part of Drill Warrior. Resiak has gotten low. A nice Lux finding is going to lead into a kill with the Pike Ultimate. There's the Chain of Corruption landing. We're going to see a second use of the Pike Ultimate. However, Bimbos gets hit by that Event Horizon stun on the part of Impolite. And so that's going to turn into a two for one overall good fight for blue team. And it's going to leave off right there. So they're going to look to go ahead and just back reset. We'll see if they take the dragon. While they are resetting though, I want to check in here on the top lane. I am losing this lane, losing it very badly to myth. I am just desperately trying to hold on. He is more than 1200 gold ahead. At this point, I was trying to back. I was like, he's going to kill me if I stay. But then myth decides to initiate. He pulls tower aggro and I was like, wait a minute. He's fighting me under the tower. He has no mana. He can't fight me. And so <laughs> I'm able to pick up a gift wrapped kill. Myth typed in all chat. Whoops after that. So yeah, I'm losing this lane and losing it pretty badly. It's not a good matchup for Nasus, but I am able to get one kill back there 
when Myth makes a mistake. Also, let's go ahead and back up and watch this play here around the dragon since we haven't seen this play. Alright, so we uh, we see on my team, blue team, we see XBL via that scrying orb. Now Mark is going to go in, he's going to land the build skewer, then he's going to hit the stun into the Lux ultimate, and that along with the ignite is going to be enough to pick that up. So nice combo play there. Most of it being handled by Mark, who is playing a dis pretty disgusting pike game yet again. Uh, down here in the bot lane, Saint looks like he was able to get Restiac really low. And all he can really do is back up. This tower is definitely forfeit, so goes down, gets that really early tower. And like I said, they've snowballed this lane super duper hard. And are going to be in a position to snowball the wider game off of that as well. Looks like Mark wants to go in again. A nice defensive use of the Yumi Q, but Impolite not able to escape. And it looks like this is going to turn into a free dragon here for blue team. There's not much you can do. Honestly, blue team probably should have taken the first dragon a little bit sooner, given how dominant blue team was in the bottom lane. But it's all good. Got to go ahead and claim the Earth Drake here. Yes, the Mountain Drake or Earth Drake is the weakest of the dragon types overall. It doesn't really do much to help your early laning, but it will help in case of any Baron fights later on. Like, it makes it much easier to take Baron or dragons later. And remember, you can't take the second dragon until you take the first one. Right there, Resiak and Drill Warrior are going to escape and do a nice job of dodging out of that attempted gank. Uh, meanwhile, up in the top lane, I have survived Myth stealing my ult and using it. There is the gigantic version of the Silas. Nice use of the Lux ult, by the way, but it's not enough to save the tower. Uh, trying to use the Lux ult to kill the wave so that Myth wouldn't be able to take the tower, but it's just too late. I'm too far behind. I don't die to Myth when he steals my ult, but it's not enough to stop him from taking the tower. And as previously mentioned, he is very far ahead in this lane. He is, uh, what, about 40 minion kills, and he's also up about 1,200 gold, so doing his best to snowball this game. And XPL is also ahead in the jungle matchup as well, if not quite as much as he was before. Also, I should mention Impolite's ahead in the mid matchup, too. It is only in the bot lane that Blue Team is ahead, but Blue Team is very far ahead in that bot lane matchup. Blue, or red team is looking to invade right now. They go ahead and steal the blue. I actually didn't know they did this during the game. I was playing defensively, but I didn't know that they had stolen this. And XPL is going to step here. And then for some reason, I don't realize that Myth is going to be there. And I was like, oh, whoops. Well, yeah, that's a, that's a bad massive step. Should have realized that Myth would be there. Uh, for some reason, I thought it was just XPL. But no, nope, Myth was there as well. And so that turns into an easy kill for their team. Fafleck, -like Bimbo's coming over here, trying to help us out. Saints lurking in the rush. Let's see if they can turn this into a fight. A nice root from Fafleck, -like, gonna set up this fight into the left ultimate. They pick that up. Pike ult used, does not get the pike reset. We also had Saint get a kill in mid, so go back and look at that in a second. But at this point, we're just cleaning up that kill, so nicely done there. Let's see how this play got set up here in mid. Alright, so Saint is hanging out here in the rush. Oh, his Banshees has just come back up. And he is going to look to go ahead and pick up that kill. Yeah, he can actually walk right through the Event Horizon stun because he had... A, oh, not, not a Banshee's though. He had a Knight's Veil. I see. He had the Knight's Veil and was able to channel to get that Spell Shield. And that allows him to walk right through the Vagar stun. Admittedly, it wouldn't make much sense for him to have a Banshee's Veil, but uh, you just don't see the Edge of Knight all that often in these games. And so anyway, that allows him to walk right through the Vagar stun and pick up the kill in, with uh, relative ease there. Again, also helped by the fact that Saint is super duper fed in this game. Game. So let's look a little bit about how he's building Varus right now while he goes ahead and kills this mid turret since everyone else has apparently left mid lane. He uh, maxed the Q first. I believe this is pretty standard in order to get the maximum amount of the harass damage in lane. He is maxing the E second. Uh, my understanding was that Q and E are maxed in some order. By the way, we have a teleport coming in here. Let's see what this turns into. Myth is teleporting in here. And let's see if Saint can escape this. He is going to pop the, uh, the uh, Ghost Blade for the extra movement speed. Unfortunately, Baflik is right there. Oh, Myth is going to get the kill. Gets the huge shutdown. So even though he dies, that's probably worth it. And even though it's a two for one, I would say that's probably worth it because they did get the 900 gold shutdown. Meanwhile, we're going to see the Rift Herald use here. Fortunately, he has managed to finish channeling that Rift Herald before any kind of stun or other form of hard crowd control can land. That's going to turn into a charge on the tower. So we're going to get that. Mid tower is very low. A really good route there from Baffle to allow Bimbo's to go in. Good defensive Yumi ult on the part of Drill Warrior is going to stop a kill from coming in. Resiak's going to use the Kaisa ult in order to dash forward. Baffle looks like he's pretty dead here. Lux not really a champ who has much in the way of escape. So overall, really good fight on the part of Red Team. They are able to pick up several kills there. I believe they went three for one in the longer play. Uh, at the very least, they went for a 2 for 1. Not sure if they got the 3 for 1. Resiak and Drill Warrior may be over chasing this just a little bit, though. See, Mark 
looking to maybe go back in. Saint's now going to flash, land the Chain of Corruptors. Pike Gold's going to land. Now Jorir has nowhere to go. Pike Gold again on the reset gets the second kill. And so that's going to turn into a 2 for 0. Yeah, they, they think they just pushed it a little too much, stuck around just slightly too long down here in the bottom lane. And so they are going to end up getting cleaned up right there. And, uh... Like I said, overchase the play a little bit. So overall, probably still a good play for the red team since they were pretty far behind there. But ends up maybe ends up giving away a little bit of the advantage they just picked up by overchasing on the play a little bit. So as I mentioned, skilling order. Uh, Q first, E second. You only need one point in W. You basically are using the W just for the passive. You're not really using it for the active function. So one point is plenty there. Oh, look at that poke damage there. Pretty disgusting. Uh, and of course, skill your ultimate whenever it's available. Looks like more points in the Chain of Corruption do increase the damage. And let's see, it does not increase the uh, root duration, but you wouldn't expect it to do that. In terms of the item build, you generally want to go for uh, some amount of lethality, the old armor penetration, items that provide this. Varus is kind of an AD caster, if that makes sense. There's a number of champions that do this. So those kind of champions typically try to stack a lot of uh, what's now lethality, what used to be armor penetration on their builds, and that's what you're seeing Saint do here. He went for the Ghost Blade first, attack damage cooldown reduction, uh, the lethality and then you've got that active function that gives you additional movement speed. It gives you that burst of movement speed. Then you went into the Edge of Night, which is another lethality item. Health, attack damage, more lethality. So dealing uh, the, the chance to do true damage to enemies unless they start stacking a bunch of armor. Conversely, it's actually more effective to get the lethality items against champions that have little in the way of armor. So you're doing true damage. They actually don't do that much against someone who has a lot of armor. More effective against champs who have very little in the way of armor. But uh, that's kind of the way it goes, and again, this reflects the fact that Varus is kind of a lane bully, uh, is better in the early game, does not scale super duper well into the late game, and then smartly picks up the Hex Drinker as a way to defend against the Vagar, and also to defend against the Silas, who are two of the stronger members of the enemy team. Anyway, we're going to have a fight right there. We saw the Root landed in place, and then that sets up Fafleck to land the Lux ultimate to pick up that kill. So that seems to be going well. Able to pick off the kill on XPL. At this point, the game is really starting to snowball. Another really nice hook in on the part of the bonus skewer there. That's going to turn to one kill. It is a traded back right there on the part of Nip. Nip using the stolen Lux ultimate, and Resiat picks up the kill. So, uh, two for two in the extended trade. Unfortunately, Fafleck not able to hit that Lux ultimate. However, now Bimbos has come in behind the play. He's going to get the kill on Nip. Gets the reach that allows him to hop out of there. And now we're seeing me come in belatedly to the plate. It's like, oh yeah, Nasus. Uh, yeah, he can chase this down pretty easily. Uh, for some reason, I'm slow in chasing after Drill Warrior. There's the Wither. I'm gonna use that Q that does like 80% of Drill Warrior's health. And so yeah, I am gonna be able to pick up one kill there. Uh, flash for it. I don't know if the flash was strictly necessary. So hey, able to pick up a kill and assist there. Finally doing something useful for the team. How many stacks do I have on Nasus? 324 is actually not especially great and reflects the fact that I've been getting dominated pretty hard up in the top lane. But hey, able to pick up a kill on an assist right there and able to use the Demolition uh, Rune Mastery, whatever it's called. I think it's Rune to help us take that tower. So yeah, at this point in time in the game, it's snowballed pretty heavily in favor of Blue Team. Again, being led by the bot lane. 728, 618, that's what, 13, 3, 16 combined. Really dominant play on the part of both Saint and Mark. Mark in particular has been setting up these kills over and over and over again. Uh, that is where the lead is on the part of Blue Team. It is in that bot lane where uh, Saint is 4,000 gold ahead and Mark is 3,000 gold. So that's 7,000 gold in a game where we're ahead by about 5,000 gold. We have taken the first two dragons. We've gotten a Mountain Drake and an Infernal Drake. The Mountain Drake will set up future Baron plays if we want to go for Baron, and the Mountain will make it easier to take, or the Mountain makes it easier to take Baron. Obviously, the Infernal Drake is just good all around to give us that bonus additional damage. What we should be doing right now is looking to snowball the game. We want to try to take more towers and then use the fact that we've taken towers to get vision control around Baron. Look to take that Baron. We actually have a pretty good Baron taking team. Varus is pretty good at taking Baron uh, due to his attack speed, the fact that he gets a fair amount of attack speed. Uh, Nasus is really good at taking Baron. Yeah, one thing that not many people know about Nasus is when he pops his ultimate, he can kill Baron incredibly fast, and it can be worthwhile to pop your ult just to take Baron. Anyway, we've got a fight over here. Fafleck gets caught out by Impolite on that Vagar Event Horizon stun, so that's going to be a fairly easy kill. And now they want to see if they can chase the but Mark is immediately there, lands the Bone Skewer, that's going to turn into one kill. Now we see the defensive Yumi ult used. I'm tanking a lot of damage here. I do take out half of Impolite's life bar, 
but I do get wiped out there. Did not have flash up because I used it in the last fight. However, Mark is going to be able to hit one stun there on XBL. Saint is then going to follow up the kill. That's going to turn into one kill right there. And now Jewel Warrior, Yumi, all by herself, really has no chance. Just dies instantly to another one of those piercing arrows. So overall in the fight, we go three for two in the extended fight. And once again, we come out on top on the part of the bot lane. And then Bimbos looks like he picked up a kill on Impolite at the, at the, the side over there in the bot lane. So I guess that's an extended three for... It, uh, well, anyway, we'll get back to that. Right now, Myth is going in 1v1ing Saint. Does steal the ultimate. Saint's now going to flash. Looks like Fafleck was not needed there. So he picks up another kill. And that is then going to turn into a Baron for our team. I'm going to go ahead and teleport onto the court. And we're just going to look to take this. Now, we don't have our jungler. Note that Bimbos is in bot lane, where he manages to get the isolated kill on uh, Resiak, who is by himself. Um, but they just have nobody there. There's no one from the enemy team who's here. So we're going to go ahead and look to take this Baron. We do have a Mountain Drake. We probably wouldn't be able to do this without the Mountain Drake. So we get that big bonus to, to Baron. And so we're going to pick that up. And at this point, the game really and truly has gotten out of hand. We've now snowballed 8,000 gold ahead. And there's not a lot the enemy team can do. So I'm going to speed this up until we get to the next team fight. Just because my team has gotten really far ahead. As previously mentioned on... Um, on the Varus pick here, I mentioned you max the Q first, then max the E second. One point in W, skill your ult whenever it's available, and get those lethality items uh, in your build. So we already saw the uh, Yomu's Ghost Blade, we saw the Edge of Night, we got a serrated Dirk right here, we just took the Mountain Drake. We'll slow it back down, get back into normal time here. And we've also saw the Hex Drinker upgraded into the Maul of Malmordius. Again, all the, because this is not a crit based build, it is an early game based build. Unfortunately, Fafleck misses the Lux combo right there, but uh, Lux stops on a short cooldown. It'll come back up again. Um, so as I mentioned, not a great late game build, but still, look at the damage there. And yes, again, Saint is super fed in this game, but he did take out about almost half of Impolite's life bar there on just one piercing arrow. This is one reason why the uh, Varus pick is very popular in competitive play right now. Uh, you see him clicked over and over again in the professional scene right now. People really like his uh, his lane dominance, the fact that he can really control the lane, has great poke damage, and also brings a little bit of extra crowd control to a team fight. So he's pretty popular right there. Anyway, so we've got a bit of a fight. Bimbo is going to just flash over the wall and clean up that kill on Resiak. Did get the isolated bonus right there. Now, can he get out of here? We see more poke being landed over the wall on XPL. And with Baron buff, it should be pretty easy to push. I'm just split pushing in top, killing these towers. The rest of the team looking to continue this shove right here. Again, defensive Yumi ult used. Uh, it is able to get the kill on Faf, like together with the damage from Vagar. Uh, however, Saint is going to 1v1 get the kill there. And oh, this damage. Those just like three abilities used on poor Drill Warrior, who has no survivability whatsoever. Yumi, not the tankiest champion. Meanwhile, I am killing the tower in top lane. Mark's coming over to support me. We have gotten most of the mid lane already, and then Saint is shoving down here in bot. Has gotten this tower super deep below. Over here, Mark... Let me go back and show this, because Mark has some really nice play here, as I was not focusing the camera. Alright, so watch the pike here. We see Myth comes up to the top lane. He's going to miss his initiation on me. And at this point, I'm content to back off. But Mark's like, no, no, no. We can go in here. He's going to dash right in, land the stun, use his ultimate. And then we're going to be able to pick off the kill there. I actually get the kill. Um, Myth did try to steal the pike ultimate and did try to use it there. But it was already too late. So Inhib goes down in bot lane. Inhib goes down in top lane. And now there's just the Inhib in mid lane. And I was like, hey, I can just tank this. Um, I'm Nasus. I can tank these tower shots. I've got the Demolition passive. That'll, well, not passive, uh, Mastery Rune. That'll allow us to take that turn at the cost of, like, half of my health bar. And we really wanted to finish the game here, but we are really low. Resiac's about to respawn. Miss about to respawn. We still don't have Fath like who got picked earlier. Uh, the smarter play is not to try to finish here. Although we probably could have with the Baron buff. Smarter play is just the back right here and look to make sure we don't get caught out and killed. So we are going to look to do that. Let's see if Bimbos can get out. Yeah, and Bimbos gets picked. Once Bimbos gets caught there, it's like, all right, let's just back out. So we're going to look to back reset. We'll just speed this up here because this is not a terribly close game. Again, I always advocate not being overly greedy. Don't be stupid. We've got every all the inhibs down. We've got the Nexus exposed. Just go back, reset, everybody buy. We can even take another Baron if we have to, but we probably don't need to. Really, we just need to get everybody together, walk straight up mid with all five of us. We're 
10,000 gold ahead. We've got the Inferno. We've got the Double Mountain. Literally, all we have to do is walk up and hit the Nexus. However, Bimbo is just going to go in and assassinate poor Respiat. Immediately, this sort of fight. Fatflick gets another pick. We're going to get the kill on Bim. I mean, there's nothing they can do. The only way that they can win is for us to screw up. So, as long as we're just smart, back, heal, reset, walk back in. Yes, the game takes two minutes longer, but there's 0% chance of us losing instead of 5% chance for us losing. Uh, just kind of the smarter way to clean, close things out if you want to make sure you're going to win the game. Anyway, though, so this was a really dominant performance by the bot lane on blue team. They are the ones who won this game. If you notice, red team was ahead in top, red team was ahead in jungle, red team was ahead in mid, but the bot lane just was so, so strong. Really, really impressive play on the part of Saint Showdown and Mark Owens here. Uh, the pike, really scary, and Saint just picking up kills left and right, 12 to 10 on the game. If you want to look at the gold totals, you can see how far ahead they are. 15,000 gold on Saint and 10,000 gold on Mark. Uh, they're pretty much the most in the game, although I guess Bimbos did end up with a lot of gold too after he picked up a lot of kills at the tail end of this one. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed this video. I will continue doing the Tuesday YouTube night games and uh, we're having a lot of fun so please feel free to come out and show uh, please feel free to come out show up and take part in some of these games bimbos was a new name this week and we'd love to see some more new faces show up so until then take care guys hope you're having a good week see you guys soon